<laughs> thank you, Mike. <laughs> I, I want to thank you all for being here tonight uh, in this tribute to the Civil Liberties Act of 1988. As you all know, it's the 20th anniversary that we're uh, celebrating uh, for the next 10 days. So thank you for coming. Uh, and I especially want to thank uh, Representative Mike Honda for uh, sponsoring the room tonight and also to Ayama Nagatani, his legislative aide. And I do want to put a plug in for the JCL. She is the co-president of the JCL DC chapter. So thank you, Ayama. Thank you for being here tonight as well. Um, and, and thank you again for, for coming. Thank you, board members, for being here. Uh, as well. I, I really appreciate the turnout that, that you've made. Uh, we at the Japanese American uh, Memorial Foundation are very grateful to uh, Congress, the Senate, and the House for uh, making the passage of the act possible. Uh, as you all know, this law led to the education and the commitment that these injustices that uh, our families, friends, and others felt uh, would never happen again. Uh, this, it also led to uh, the building of the memorial itself, and uh, that's something that uh, I'm, I'm very happy about as well, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm chair. Uh, as chair, I, I represent the third generation of Japanese Americans. Uh, and, and it's quite an honor for me to serve as chair in this capacity. Uh, my father, his parents, uh, his three brothers, his sister, uh, all were removed from their homes and businesses in Pasadena, California, uh, and relocated to uh, just a few miles away to the Santa Anita racetrack uh, where they lived for uh, about five or six months uh, before uh, they were relocated again to Gila River, Arizona, where uh, they lived for about three years. And if you've ever been to Gila River, which is just outside of Phoenix, it's a dry, desolate uh, area. It's now an Indian reservation, actually, and, and you can only get onto the site of the uh, camp by getting permission from the Indians to, to get onto the site. They lived there, as I said, for three years. Uh, my father, uh, actually graduated from high school uh, behind barbed wire. And uh, the, the one thing that I remember from him is that he has his high school yearbooks from those days. And it, it's quite the, quite the sight, actually. Uh, after after uh, he uh, finished high school and in 1945, uh, he was actually drafted into the armed services uh, out of camp. Uh, so, uh, but my point here is that Forty years later, um, like other Nisei, uh, he did not speak very much about the, his internment experience. Uh, and it wasn't until the, the Civil Rights Act and, and uh, the, the Committee on Relocation, a after they started talking about things, only then did he start to talk about uh, his experiences in camp. And so, to me, the Civil Liberties Act really was a catharsis for him. Uh, for our families, and he started then speaking out more about what happened. And so the apology and redress really made a difference uh, in my family personally because of uh, that act and, and what it meant to him. So I personally thank uh, you all for that, and uh, that's what led me here today. I know we're in a hurry, so I'm going to cut this short, and I'm going to introduce Mike Honda, who uh, we'll be introducing uh, Representative Doris Matsui. Thank you. There you go, Mike. 